Oh, hey, I'm David Morgan, and you're now watching Black Boys Can Read. Black boys, black boys, black boys can read. Welcome to Black Boys Can Read TV, where I show the world that not only can black boys play sports, rap, sing, and dance, but we can also read. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, duh, of course black people can read, of course black boys can read, but there's a lot of people out there who think otherwise. I can't blame them. Well, I mean, some of them I can, but for the most part, a lot of them don't even know black people. They don't know any real black people. They've never been around them. They only know what's been portrayed in the mainstream media. And if you know, like I know, in the mainstream media, whether it be the news, movies, TV, music, the image they portray doesn't really lean in our favor. We're not normally portrayed as educated. So if you've never been around black people and you just go off of what you see, you'll assume that all of us are all about drama or we're violent or we we don't read books, pretty much. So, I mean, I just wanted to start this series to kind of shift that perspective and, you know, show people that you can be black, you can be cool, you can be handsome, and also read. So today, I'll be reading a piece from one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite books, A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. The piece I'll be reading today is called Clooney the Clown, and here we go. I'll tell you the story of Clooney the Clown, who worked in a circus that came through town. His shoes were too big and his hat was too small, but he just wasn't, just wasn't funny at all. He had a trombone to play loud silly tunes. He had a green dog and a thousand balloons. He was floppy and sloppy and skinny and tall, but he just wasn't, just wasn't funny at all. And every time he did a trick, Everyone felt a little sick. And every time he told a joke, folks sighed as if their hearts were broke. And every time he lost a shoe, everyone looked awfully blue. And every time he stood on his head, everyone screamed, go back to bed. And every time he made a leap, everybody fell asleep. And every time he ate his tie, everyone began to cry. And Clooney could not make any money simply because he was not funny. One day he said, I'll tell this town how it feels to be an unfunny clown. And he told them all why he looked so sad. And he told them all why he felt so bad. He told of pain and rain and cold. He told of darkness in his soul. And after he finished his tale of woe, did everyone cry? No, oh, no, no, no. They laughed until they shook the trees with ha ha ha's and he he he's. They laughed with howls and yowls and shrieks. They laughed all day. They laughed all week. They laughed until they had a fit. They laughed until their jacket split. The laughter spread for miles around to every city, every town, over mountains, across the sea to Saint Tropez to Mont Saint Denis, and soon the whole world rang with laughter lasting till forever after while Clooney stood in the circus tent with his head drooped low and his shoulders bent and he said that is not what I meant I'm funny just by accident and while the whole world laughed outside Clooney the clown sat down and cried what does that mean to you take a second think about it what I got from it is sometimes entertainers are really truly being honest with their pain and we just take it as entertainment. We don't really realize what they're going through. And another thing I said from it, which is not so dark, more positive is you shouldn't try so hard to impress people or entertain people. You should just be yourself and maybe they'll like you more. Um, yeah, I'm David Morgan, Black Boys Can Read. See you next week. I'll be reading some of my books. Until then, peace. Okay, bye now. See y'all later. Oh, yeah.
Bad boys, 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 bad boys